my name's Emily. Thank you for joining me for this Pilates Reformer class. Today we're going to be working uh, through the center, but we'll also be working on some side body exercises. We'll be side lying quite a bit on the Reformer, as well as doing some kneeling work and some light box work, which is why I have my box. I also have two sticky mats for uh, safety purposes a little later. And I also have a small bender ball. I'm going to use it for a pillow underneath my head so I don't crinkle my neck when I'm lying on my side. You can use uh, a cervical pillow for under your head if you'd like. Uh, yoga block is also fine. Um, if you can find a pillow that's small enough, you're welcome to use that. But let's go ahead and begin. We're going to come down to lying on our sides. I have three to four springs on my machine for footwork. Whatever you use for footwork, is whatever we'll start with today. Uh, my springs are three heavies, one medium. On my machine, that's three green and one red. But to begin, we're just gonna work on some light breath work. So I'm gonna go ahead and come on my back, locate a nice neutral spine with a nice heavy sacrum. I'm gonna think of anchoring the bottom of my 12th rib of the mat so it's not flying off. I really wanna close my ribs on the front so they're not flaring. Leave a slight lift in between my sacrum and my 12th rib on my back side of my body. Let's go and platform our arms by our sides, roll our shoulders up, back and down, so we're not flaring our ribs. But we have a nice open collarbone, nice soft sternum. Start to feel an engagement in your abdominals. From hip to hip as you breathe, when you exhale, it should almost feel as if there's an empty bowl settling between your hip bones. You really deeply connect with your lower transversus abdominis. So platforming arms down by your sides. Inhale. Exhale deeply. Feeling your lower abdominals sink with the exhale. Take another nice inhale. Don't allow your ribs to flare as you inhale. And sink your abs as you exhale. From there, we're going to bring our legs to a little bit more of a parallel position if they're not already. We're going to inhale. As we exhale, sink your abdominals first like you would in the double leg lower lift in the series of five. But when you exhale, exhale first and then think of not lifting your left leg but making it light with the support of your abdominals. So without using your hip flexors or quads, you want to draw in on your core Really tighten up from the box of your body, shoulders to hips, a little on the back side of the glutes, and float your leg off to just make it light. Release it down. <sighs> Exhale, sink your lower abdominals, and float your right leg just with a little lift. You can't even see that I've made my right leg light. I have. I can feel the work in my body. I'm sinking my ribs down to the mat without imprinting my spine, supporting my leg with the use of my abdominals now. Release. I did another video yesterday for this month where we did the same warm up on the mat, left leg light, and I felt it the next day in my lower abdominals. Well, today in my lower abdominals. If you're doing it properly, you should feel support in your leg that's not moving off the bar as well release because you don't want right leg like, the backs of your hip bones to shift weight wise either you so you really gotta I feel a lot of work on my opposite side obliques I feel some support from my glutes I feel a nice rib wrap here my shoulders aren't doing anything my neck's not doing anything give it a nice shake release yeah go ahead and inhale exhale Hello on your abdominals, make your left leg light. Now, by using your abdominals, float your leg up to tabletop. Ground in through that back hip as if you're really, you have a rebar or a pole sticking through your hip all the way up to the ceiling. Find that same feeling in the right leg. Inhale, exhale. Make your leg light first. And now, wrapping your ribs, using your abdominals, pulling that 12th rib down to the mat. Bring your legs up to tabletop. From there, we're going to separate our feet and our heels, rotating the femur and the hip socket. Coming to a tighter frog position, our feet are flexed, our toes are pulling back towards our knees. I'm going to place my heels down on my foot bar in a Pilates V position. I'm in, I, uh, 
I'm in position for footwork. So from here, I'm going to relocate my neutral spine, platform my arms down by my side, inhale out, squeezing up through the midline, and exhale, resisting back in. From there, go ahead and adjust your heels if you need to. If you did not get them in your optimal position for footwork, inhale and exhale. Now, the weight is heavier, so instead of letting the shoulder, the shoulder um, blocks crunch in on your spine, make them growing taller and shooting energy up out of your head as you shoot energy up through your heels. Inhale, reach long, and exhale. Think of reaching your head up through your uprights at the top of your machine. Think of rotating your femur in the hip socket and tracking your knees over your big toes. Good. One more. And now from here, we're going to bring our legs to parallel, but we're going to separate our heels so that they're right underneath our sits bones, right back here. So our sits bones are lined up with our knees, our knees are lined up with our big toe. We have a nice, perfect number 11 with our legs. We can go ahead and check in on them at any time if they're going in or going out. We need to go ahead and support our legs more, pay more attention to our legs rather than our abdominals and our body so that we can really line up our legs properly. Go ahead and shift around a little bit, make yourself comfortable with your time. Inhale it out, shooting energy up on the top of your head, and exhale back in. This position will be brought back up later, but we'll be on our forearms instead. So go ahead and remember how it feels to have your heels right underneath your sits bones in a neutral spot. And inhale out, and exhale back in. Squeeze your glutes to press and straighten up. Getting nice space in the front of your hip flexors and in. Inhale. Feel that hollowness in your hip from hip to hip, still in your transverse abdominis. You're still using that support down there as you press in and out. Two more. One more. Make sure that you're not rocking in your sacrum when you're doing this. And now, we're going to float our feet up to tabletop using our lower abdominals. Separate out our feet to a wide second position or a wide Pilates V position. We're going to come down onto the balls of our feet here. Normally, we come down onto our heels first. Here, we're going to come straight down onto the balls of our feet. I have my weight between my big toe and my second toe mostly. From there, I'm going to press it out, out, out. Squeezing up, drawing in towards the midline still, and now I'm going to resist the strings as I come back to the carriage. My knees are tracking over my big toe again. I'm rotating the femur in the hip socket. So we just did two exercises in Pilates V and in parallel on our heels. The next two exercises are going to be in Pilates V and in parallel on the balls of our feet or in demi point position. We're still shooting energy up out of our head. We're reaching energy out through the foot bar. Keep breathing. My preferred breath pattern is uh, inhale on the way out and exhale on the way in. As long as you have a breath pattern, I'm very pleased. <laughs> Good. We have two more in this position. And really wrap the muscles on your quads from the inside of the knee out to the hips. So really feel the wrap, 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 wrap. Good. And final one, reach, squeeze your glutes in and thighs, and back. Now, sink your lower abdominals, float your feet back up to tabletop, locate the foot bar, squeezing your legs together. I have the inner aspects of my feet, I have my knees and my ankles all squeezing together. I'm going to inhale out, stretching out long, stretching out the fronts of my hip flexors, and exhale back in. Creasing up the hip flexors. So uncrease and then crease. Nothing in my body changes. The movement is coming from the creasing and uncreasing from the hip flexors. Good. Squeeze your glutes and inner thighs. Whoop. So the wrap your glutes. Good. Here's 10. Come all the way back in. And now press out. Now we're going to trap. We're going to drop our left heel under and our right knee is going to come over the foot bar. 
I'm going to feel a nice stretch in the front of my hip flexor. I'm going to have equal weight on the back of my sacrum. I'm going to pull all the way up. My, both my heels are going to come all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to drop my right heel under. My left knee is going to come across the foot bar. I'm going to pull all the way up. I'm going to speed it up as long as I'm at rocking in the back of my sacrum. Drop my left heel, lift, right heel, lift, left, right. Make sure that your knees aren't coming, going in or out. You're making sure that they track straight up to the ceiling. And that number 11 that we were talking about earlier, that same position. Keep breathing. Keep squeezing your inner legs together, the, in, the inner parts of your legs. Final set. This will be the final set. Sorry about that. Now, staying up at the top, we're going to drop both heels under for one, two, three, and lift up. Two, three, shooting energy out of our head the entire time on the way down and the way up. We have 10 here. Keep breathing. Fill in the lower abdominals, hollow out. Great, good job guys. Wrapping our glutes all the way up, squeezing our inner thighs. Wrapping our ribs. Anchoring that 12 from down to the mat. Here's our last one. Down and up. Now sink your heels under, micro bend your knees. Relax for one second, feel a nice stretch. Find that nice heavy sacrum, maintaining that neutral spine, and come on in to the bumper. Good. From there, I'm going to come onto my side. I'm going to come up. I'm going to place one medium and one light spring on for sideline legs. On my machine, that is one red and one blue. We are going to sit up in between this series and the next series, still on this side to go ahead and take off the red spring to just one blue so that we can do the arm work. I'm going to grab my pillow. I'm going to drop my headrest personally. This is for my comfort. Whatever you find most comfortable for your head for the sideline, please go ahead and come, go there now. Um, for me personally, I don't like the way the ball sounds, the hollowness in my, in my ear. So I bring it up to my temple so I don't have to hear that as much. All right, from here, I come down onto my side. I'm going to line my body up as if I was doing sideline legs on the mat. I'm going to bring my foot more forward though. So my heels on the foot bar, my toes are, are hanging off here, but I have a 90 degree body position from my body to my thigh, the 90 degrees from my thigh to my calf. I'm going to take my bottom leg, I'm going to engage my inner thigh to lift my leg so that it doesn't scrape the standing platform. I have a slight lift in my side, my legs closest to the mat. I'm gonna make sure that my knee's not going in or out on this. I'm perfectly parallel. I'm not rocking back and getting into my low back. It could cause pain in your sciatica if you have issues there. I'm gonna hold on to the peg with my bottom hand. I'm gonna press into the shoulder block with my top hand. I'm gonna press out and resist it back in. I'm pressing in through my heel. My toes aren't really doing a lot. That's why it doesn't matter if they're hanging off the edge or not. I'm wrapping my, my abdomen, or I'm dropping my, my uh, abdomen and my spine, wrapping my ribs, squeezing from my glutes. Don't allow your shoulder to press up. You wanna keep your shoulder down your back. Good. Make sure you're lifting. If you're scraping the standing platform, you don't have enough engagement in your inner thigh. Now press up halfway and now up and down in two, three. We're doing pulses. Four, five. Really feel it in your glutes. Good. And ten. And come back in. Now take your leg, rotate the femur in the hip socket. Don't allow yourself to sink back in your low back when you do this. You're going to wrap your glutes and rotate your femur. So that your knee's tracking over your big toe. And now press out and resist it back in. Lift up out of your side closest to the mat. Same pattern here, just in turn out position. We're going to do 10 here and then we're going to do 10 pulses. Good. Don't pop into it. Squeeze your glutes to press out and in. 
Here's 10. And now, come out halfway and go up and down and up and down. Three, four. Make sure you're not sinking back. Good. Now, we're going to bring our foot all the way on to the foot bar and we're going to press out. Pressing into our leg strongly. Now, using the bottom leg without sinking back, we're going to squeeze our bottom leg up and down. Squeeze up and up. So I brought my foot on the top towards the middle. So it's as if I'm standing. Good. Ten. Stay up at to the top now. Forward and squeeze it back. You shouldn't be rocking in your hips here. You should be squeezing your glutes to bring your leg to the back. Good. After this, we'll do five circles in each direction, same in the frame of the foot bar, underneath the foot bar. One more. Lift up by your side, closest to the mat. Come back to the center. And now five small circles in each direction. If you feel yourself sinking into the mat, try to use more inner thigh and glute. And make your circles smaller. Excellent. Now keep your leg lifted. Come back in. Grab your pillow if it's going to roll away from you. Come up to sitting. Drop that medium spring so you only have one light spring on. We're going to come back down to line. We're going to be doing some side lining arms here. So, coming back down, I'm going to replace my ball right under my head. I'm going to come back into the side lining position, but my legs are bent in. So I don't have my knees tucked, so I'm tucking in my, my spine. My body and my thighs are making a 90 degree angle. And instead of leaving my thighs to my calves at an or shins at a 90 degree angle, I tuck my heels back to my glutes so that they don't catch my foot bar and get hurt. I'm going to take my handle as opposed to my foot strap. That's my mistake. I'm sorry for the mistake, guys. And I'm going to hold it in front of me. I have tension in my strap personally. I'm holding it so that my shoulders down my back, my biceps are squeezing into my ribs, and my arm is coming out of my body at 90 degrees. I'm really squeezing strongly under my arm. I'm going to straighten my hands so that my palms facing towards the back. Sorry, it's catching my glasses. And then I'm going to release back to the 90 degrees and press and release. Good. Keep drawing your abdominals up and in and keep lifting out of your side. The legs are a little easier now. The load isn't there, really uh, challenging your body. So you can really work on lifting up your obliques closest to the mat. Squeeze under your arm. Let's do one more. And now we're gonna leave our arm right here, but press it out so the palm's coming out. My palm is about right at my bra strap or where my fault for my sternum me. I don't wanna start it all the way up at my shoulder because I can crank up into my neck from there. So now I'm gonna press back with a long arm and pull it back to my sternum or bra strap. Back and release. For this breath pattern, I like to exhale as I pull my arm back and inhale on the way front. Now I pull my shoulder down my back as I pull back and I pull my shoulder down as I release my arm front. I'm really working underneath my arm the entire time. Good, let's do two more. One more. Now, draw your arm back into the 90 degrees, but bring your hand up at an angle. We're going to be working to the side. For my body person, my arm doesn't reach up to the ceiling like that, but it does reach up to the front more where the wall and the ceiling meet. Now, spiraling out to my pinky blade edge, a little bit more right there, I pull my pinky blade edge down to my hip and I release back up. That's going to target the underneath part of my arm a little bit more strongly. So if you're working on getting rid of some jiggles under there, this would be the exercise for you. Five, six, abdominals to spine. Wrapping your ribs. Nine. One more, only coming to the 90 degrees, guys, right? Now I'm gonna press my arm up. Again, it's coming out of my bra strap area or if my sternum and 12th were to wrap around, that area. I'm still spiraling out 
my pinky blade edge and then squeeze my arm down and I release it back up. Again, here as well as when I was going from the front to the side, I'm pulling my shoulder blade down all the way down, I'm pulling my shoulder blade down all the way up. Good. And exhale on the way down, inhale up. Almost there. Two more. Final one. Now leaving your arm up at the side, bring it forward, squeeze it back, float it up. We're doing five arm circles in each direction. And forward, again, come out of your sternum the whole time, so you're not getting into your neck. We're really feeling the rib wrap here. Now reverse, bring your pinky blade edge down your hips, float it front and lift it up, and hip and front and lift, three. A nice rotation in your shoulder. If you have shoulder issues, you can do this without the um, straps, just with some weights. Let's do one more side left down. Good job. And up, recenter. Okay. Now go ahead and come back into the center. Release your strap. We are going to go ahead and come on up and work our, our, our legs and then our arms on the other side. And then we're going to go ahead and do some, uh, some arms kneeling and some work through the center after that. So coming to the other side, bring my pillow with me. I'm going to replace that one medium spring, the one red spring on my machine. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have my handles on as opposed to my foot strap, which I did not do before class. Sorry again about that. I'm going to come down onto my side. Place my pillow down. Line up my body for side lying legs. So I don't want any tucking and I don't want any tilting on my pelvis. I want a nice neutral spine, just like we have for footwork. I'm going to bring my foot in parallel, bring my foot out so that my body is making a 90 degree angle from my body to my thigh. I have a 90 degree angle from my thigh to my shin. I'm going to extend my leg underneath of my other leg, under my leg closest to that, underneath the foot bar, lifting up with my inner thigh so my leg does not scrape on the carriage. I'm going to lift up out of my side closest to the mat, pressing in through my glute. I'm going to press and come back in, staying in a nice parallel position. And now, exhale. Now while we're doing that, let's talk about our hands again. My hand that's closest to the mat is wrapping around my peg. If you don't have a peg, you can hold on to your shoulder block. My top hand is pressing into the shoulder block. You can press your hand in front of you. I find it's a little easier for me to maintain uh, a square body position when I'm working my legs here on the, on the uh, carriage if I have my hand pressing into the shoulder block. Here's 10. Come back in. Press out halfway. And now pulse up and down, up and down. Good. Keep it going. Really locate that glute where the thigh and the glute meet and try to work from there. Keep your leg in perfect parallel. Squeeze your bottom glute as well. Lift up out of your mat. Lift your side about close to that. Now, take your leg, rotate the femur and the hip socket by squeezing your glutes. Don't allow yourself to rock back when you rotate. But squeeze forward, forward, forward. And now press out and in. Here's two. After we finish this leg, really squeeze it on the glute, we're going to be working the leg on the carriage. Resist the carriage back in. Good. You don't want to allow the springs to take you. You're in charge of the springs. Two more. Final one. Really squeeze and don't pop into it. Come out halfway. And up and down. Here's two. Three. No tucking, no tilting. Squeeze your glutes. Good. Wrap your abdominals. Good. And 10. Press it out. Come back in. Now, take your foot and walk it back more towards the center. I didn't say this on the other side, but your heel might not come down until you press out. That's fine. Press out. Make sure your whole foot is down now. And now squeeze your inner thighs and release. Bottom leg to top leg. 
Don't allow your side obliques to, to drop to the mat when you lift. Only lift up as high as you can and keep that lift. It's an inner thigh workout, not a crunching your body down or side bending so you can really lift your leg. Now on this one, stay up at the top and now go front, squeeze your glutes to bring your leg back and front. Try to squeeze your glutes on the top leg as well. Lift up, wrap your ribs, Draw your lower abdominals to your spine. Good. Now bring your leg back to center. Five circles in each direction. They'll be a little bit bigger than usual, maybe, depending on who you work out with. And now reverse. Excellent. Now come on back in. Grab your pillow if it's going to roll away from you. Come up to sitting. Drop that one medium spring so you only have one light spring on. Make sure your handle is still on. We're going to go ahead and do that side lying on work. So we're going to come down onto the carriage. Bring that ball underneath our head. Find that handle. Locate our neutral spine. Again, we're going to have a 90 degree position from our body to our thighs. We're going to take our shins and our heels and tuck them slightly back towards our glutes so they don't catch on the foot bar. I'm going to bring my handle down, squeezing my biceps into my ribs, bringing my arm so it comes out, my forearm comes out at a 90 degree angle for my biceps. Lift up out of your side closest to the mat, squeeze your hand back, palm back to hip, and release it back down to 90 degrees. Okay, so we are drawing our shoulder blades nice and wide here. We want to be nice and wide on the front of the collarbone as well. We don't want to sink into our back. Excellent. One more. And now take your arm, press it out. So your fingertips are coming out of your bra strap or where your, the, uh, your ribs and your uh, sternum meet on the bottom and press it back and release it forward to your bra strap. Now pull your shoulder blade down, 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 and pull it down as you float your arm forward. Keep breathing. Good. The second side is always harder, isn't it? Here's nine. See if you can locate that deep transversus abdominis connection that we had at the beginning of class. Now pull your arm back into 90. Now, if you can give your arm a break real fast, you can. I know I certainly needed to. I'm going to spiral my arm up so that it's coming up for some side work. Spiral my pinky blade down slightly. Draw that down right hip and release to 90. The second side is always the hardest because you've already worked it on the first side. Abdominals up and in. Don't sink into the mat. Draw your shoulder blade down. Come out of your neck. One more. Good. And now reach your arm up so it's coming out of your bra strap from the side again. Or if you were to wrap your sternum in 12th rib around, it would be the same place. Spiral out to your pinky blade edge and bring that down to your hip and bring it back up. Draw your shoulder blade down as you bring your hand down. Draw your shoulder blades down your back as you float your arm up. Good, don't sink into your low back. Here's five. We only have five more and then we have five circles in each direction. See if you can continue to squeeze your glutes as you lay on your side. Draw your bum muscles up and in. Don't wrap and wrap your ribs. Don't let your ribs flare. And now bring your arm to the front. Squeeze it to the back, float your arm up and front. We want to stay in that same bra strap, sternum, 12th rib area the whole time, so we're staying out of our neck. Two more in this direction. And now reverse, spiral out your pinky blade edge as you draw your arm down, float it front and bring it to the side. Pinky blade edge. Now as I bring my arm up from the front, I'm trying not to move the carriage. I'm trying to 
and just to whoop, resist the tension. Good. Final one. And up. Now bring your arm in, coming carefully to the bumper. I'm going to peg my strap, come up to sitting. Move my ball that I was using as my pillow, put it to the side for a moment. From there, I'm going to leave it on one blue spring. I'm going to come to a kneeling position facing the side of the carriage. If you have trouble kneeling, you can place your feet off the side of the reformer. You uh, will have a little bit more of a difficult time doing this next part. Modification for lower lift is to place your feet on the floor in front of you. Scoot your glutes to the edge of the reformer. Now drive it through your heels. You're going to try to stand up and lower while leaving your body in a straight line from your head all the way up through your tailbone. It is harder than doing it on your knees. So for those of us working on our knees, we're going to squeeze our heels together to get a nice inner thigh engagement. Again, we're going to act as if there's a straight line or a rod. There's a rod right through the top of our head, shooting out through our tailbone. We're going to draw our abdominals up and in, wrap our ribs, and lift up, squeezing our glutes strongly in our thigh, stacking our shoulders over our hips, our hips over our knees, and lowering down. From the side, it would look more like this. A straight lift. Try not to hinge. And then I'm going to lower without hinging my body forward. My hips are hinging to accommodate the lift and lower of my body. So a straight lift up and a lower down. You can do this in parallel. I find that with the inner thigh connection, it's a little easier. Now, make sure if you have a mirror nearby, go ahead and take a look at it. Make sure you're not leaning back and cheating a little bit. You really want to squeeze your glutes and open up the fronts of your hip flexors. Six is the magic number for these side arms, guys. We're going to do six of everything. Go ahead and locate your handle. Just hold on to it. You're not going to move the carriage just yet. And come up. From here, we're going to take the handle in our other arm. We're going to squeeze our bicep down by our ribs. I'm going to place my left hand on my hip, squeezing my glutes to press my hips forward. Again, I'm going to stack shoulders over hips, hips over knees, as if my arm was a door and my bicep was a hinge, I'm going to open to the side and come back. I'm leaving my shoulder blade flat down my back the whole time. I'm drawing my ribs together, drawing up and in on my lower abdominals. I'm not leaning in to the spring to move it. This is just a nice rotation in my shoulder. Now from there, I'm going to come back to the position. This is a precursor for unsheath the sword that we're about to do. My trainer, Katie Rowley, calls it the pirate arm. Without drawing her shoulder up, we're going to just bring our elbow to the side and bring it back. Try not to move the angle of your elbow. This is just a side movement. Think of going, arr, <laughs> or oh hey matey, good. From there, we're going to draw our arm across, leaving it bent. Now we're going to tricep press our arm open to the back. Bring our elbow in first, and then draw it across our body. Let's do that one more time before we add on the cervical rotation. I'm going to draw my arm up, drawing my shoulder down. Press my palm back. Bend my elbow in, and come across. To add the cervical rotation, you would look down at your hand. As you pull it across, your, hand will, your eyes will follow your hand. And then come back across. I'm not moving my whole body with it. My shoulders move slightly. It's more of a head movement. Good. And inhale. Again, we don't want to be leaning into the straps to move them. We want to be maintaining the body position as we move our arm through space. Good. Come on back down. Take your strap in your hand that's closest to the shoulder blocks. Move your knees away from the shoulder blocks, a couple inches, about six inches. Come up to the hug a tree position. Now hug a tree is not done with your elbows dropped down and your palms facing up. 
Hug a tree is a rotation of your arms and the shoulder joints where they're a nice rounded position. I've hooked my hand through, I'm not squeezing onto the strap for daylight. I'm gonna inhale. I'm gonna tap my fingertips right in front of where my sternum and 12th rib meet and exhale to resist it open. Squeezing under my arms. I'm pressing down on my arms, on my elbows. I said I'm pressing a ball down underneath. Do not lean in. Meaning, say, don't do this. Squeeze your glutes. Your weight should not shift on your knees. Good. One more. And back. And now we're going to come back up. Sit down just like we did earlier. As if there's a pull up through your head and your tailbone. And sit back, 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 back. Now, take your handles and just gently place your hand as close as the bar top. Now, we're going to be doing a rotation here. This, where your hands come behind you, is not the true rotation. The true rotation would be keeping your handle right at your sternum and rotating from there. And now we're gonna inhale and rotate across. Only as far as we can with keeping our handle right at our sternum. So if your arms are going behind you, it's not where we're going. And exhale back. Now, that being said also, so we're gonna keep our handle right there, really rotating strongly. We're going to be sitting up, straight up, as if we have the rod still sticking up from our head all the way through our tailbone, and we're rotating around the rod. Really wrap the ribs, and on the exhale, bring out the abdominals, and come back. Excellent. We're going to release the strap. We're going to be doing arm work to the other side, and then we're going to come back through the center, we're going to be doing some abdominal work from there. So I'm going to switch over to the other side. I'm going to place my knee up against the shoulder block again. I'm going to lower lift for six, as if I have the rod that's sticking out of my head straight through my tailbone. So squeeze my inner thighs, draw my abdominals up and then squeeze my glutes and lift. Squeeze my glutes to really open up my hip flexors in the front. I'm sagging my shoulders over my hips, over my knees. I'm going to hinge up my hips to come back. I'm going to lift with a squeeze and lower by hinging. Three. Wrap the ribs, drop down, those up and in. This is a very hard move. Squeeze, 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 and lower. Now, Holding onto the handle, just so it's there, we get up to the top. <sighs> Squeeze in the left. If you have a mirror nearby, go ahead and take a look and make sure that you're wrapping your ribs. Shoulders are stacked over your hips. Hips are stacked over your knees. Take the handle in your opposite hand. Bring your arm across. Drop your shoulder blade back. Squeeze your bicep into your ribs. Place your hand that's closest to the shoulder blocks on your hips. Now, using your arm as a door, your uh, bicep is a hinge, open to the side, squeeze it in the whole time and release it back. Don't lean in for the springs to assist your body. Good. Squeeze your glutes to open up the fronts of your hips. Press your shins into the carriage. One more. Now, coming back, we're going to do the pirate arm. Don't shrug your shoulder to get a pirate up here. Just release to the side and pull back. My hand comes out no further than really my hip. We're just getting our body ready to do unsheath the sword. We're going to do the first two with no cervical rotation. And then we'll do the last four with the optional cervical rotation. So. We're going to reach our arm across our body to our opposite hip. Hold your arm out to the broken T. Extend with a tricep press. Bend it back in. Bring your arm across to the hip. Bring it out to the broken T and extend. And back and come across. Now, if you'd like to, gaze down at your hand in the handle. Your gaze will follow your hand as you extend it out. Squeeze your shoulder blade down your back. Bending and come across. We are doing the unsheath the sword 
to the T position today. Squeeze your glutes, open up the fronts of your hip flexors. You can go at a higher angle, but today we're just going to here. Good. And come across. Now, place your hand on your opposite hand. Bring your knees about six inches from the shoulder blocks. Reestablish your body position. Squeeze your glutes, stacking your shoulders over your hips, hips over your knees. Come to the hug a tree position. Elbows lifted, shoulder blades down, squeezing under your arms. Press down on your elbows as if you're pressing into some balls underneath your arms. Wrap your ribs. Abdominals open in. Exhale, bring your fingertips to where your sternum and 12th rib meet, no higher. And inhale, open. And exhale together. Don't lean into the springs. Squeeze your glutes under thighs. It'll help to establish you. Press your shins into the mat. One more. Now coming back up. Sitting down by hinging at the hips, leaving your spine in the straight line like the rod. Hinge, 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 and lower. Pull. Your start the opposite hand. Place your hand close to the floor. Just gently place it over the top. Rotate. Don't shift your weight off your hip. But rotate from the ribs as if you're rotating around that rod going down your spine. And exhale to rotate and inhale back. Don't lean into it. These are the final six side arm rotations. Drop your shoulder blades down. Continue to push down on your elbows as if you're pressing down on a ball. Wrap your ribs. Draw them together as if you're wearing a corset. Good. Go ahead and release down. Take your strap. We're going to be doing some uh, abdominal work through the center. We are leaving on one light blue spring. Uh, this is because it'll be more abdominal work if we leave on one light spring as opposed to it'll be more arm work if we add heavier springs on. So we're going to be doing a lot of abdominal work today. We're going to come down onto our backs. I'm going to locate both of my handles. I'm going to bring my feet up to tabletop, supporting them with my lower abdominals. We're just going to do some curl ups. So pressing into our pinky blade edge, just like we did on the sideline arm work, we're going to bring our hands down to around our knees and then curl from there, reaching long for the foot bar. Float your arms up, float your head down. And arms, and head, and arms, and head. Find your breath, squeeze your glutes, don't tuck when you're lifting up. Nice heavy sacrum, crease over your sternum. Keep a nice space between your chin and your chest as if you're holding an egg there. You don't want to crush your egg, you don't want to let it roll away. One more. And now we're going to work on some opposite arm leg work. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to extend my left leg to my working level. I'm going to take my right hand and press it down by my hip. My left arm is going to stay up at the top. I'm going to bring my left leg and my right arm up. Now I'm going to extend my right leg, my left arm, squeezing under my arm and pull my shoulder blade away from my ear and pull it back. And now left leg, right arm. Don't allow any shifting or scrunching to happen in your body. So, keep maintaining the same weight on your sacrum the entire time on both sides. So don't allow the weight to shift. Like we were talking about during the breath work, we were lifting it. It's like don't allow one side to become heavier than the other side while you're doing this. And now come back. Now, if you're ready, go ahead and inhale, exhale, lift up. We're going to bring our arms down a little bit towards our knees so we're not putting too much pressure on our neck. Now we're going to bring down our right arm, extend our left leg, and come back. We're going to do four on each side here. <sighs> Inhale to extend. Curl up deeper if you can. Exhale back. Inhale and exhale. Guys, we only have two more on each side here. 
And then we're going to be moving on to another exercise. So final set. Good. Now rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Go ahead and place your feet down on the footbar. Separate them about the width of the footbar. Go ahead and windshield wiper your legs gently from side to side on one hip to raise. A lot of great work so far, guys. We're going to inhale, exhale, hollow from hip to hip, float our legs back up to tabletop, bring our hands up. We are going to extend our arms and our legs. When we extend our legs, we're going to turn them out to plug and see. We're going to turn them back to parallel and draw everything back in. And extend, weigh your sigma, turn out, parallel, and back. We're rotating our femur in the hip socket, squeezing our glutes to turn out our legs to the Pilates V. One more here, then we're going to raise up. So, inhale, exhale to curl up and extend. Turn out to Pilates V, parallel, draw back in. Float your arms up to about above your knees so you can stay out of your neck here. Stay really, stay under your arms. Good. And squeeze and rotate in parallel and back. One more. And rotate. And now we're going to begin the hundreds. Inhale, two, three, four, five. And exhale, two, three, four, five. Squeeze your glutes. <sighs> Squeeze your inner thighs. Drop your legs an inch or two if you're able to. And you can maintain the weight in your sacrum. You don't want to rock to your tailbone here. Shoot energy out of your fingertips so you're really reaching strong for the footbar, squeezing under your arms. Long continuous inhale, long continuous exhale. Feeling your abdomen drop. Inhale. Nice white collarbone. And exhale. Two, three, four, five. Stop there. Throw your knees into the table now. Rest your head against shoulders. Place your feet down again wide. And go ahead and do a windshield wiper. Again. With your legs. Excellent. From there, I'm going to extend my legs and my arms straight up to the ceiling. Weight my sacrum heavily. Inhale, exhale to curl up, reaching long, long, long. From there, I'm going to do a modified scissors on my legs. I'm going to reach my left leg long, tap the footbar, and lift with my lower abdominals and right leg. I feel the same sensation here that I do in the warm at the beginning of class, using my lower abdominals to lift my legs. We do have our head, neck, and shoulders raised the whole time on this exercise, but if you feel it start to bother your head, neck, and shoulders, go ahead and rest them down on the mat. The next exercise will be done resting the whole time, the head, neck, and shoulders. Two more on each side. Reach your energy long, just like we just did on hundreds. Really reaching for the foot bar. Now, fingers up, press your head, neck, and shoulders leaving your feet up in the air. We're going to lower our hands and our feet three inches and then raise them up three inches. So drop one inch, two inch, three inch. Squeeze under your arms and lift one, two, three. By the third inch, see how strongly you can feel it in your ribs. And lower, two, three, and up, two, three. I am working in parallel here. Lift, two, three, lower, two, three, lift, two, three. We are making this movement smaller for arms and legs to really maintain the contraction in our abdominals. Final one. And lift, two, three. Draw your knees into tabletop. Bring them into a frog position, rotating the femur in the hip socket. Now take your heels and extend them away from you about two to three inches. We're going to do what's referred to more commonly as like a, or what I've heard referred to as a cheerleader curl up. So one arm's going to come through our legs, reaching for the foot bar while the other come, leg come, arm comes to the outside of our legs. And then we're going to curl down and curl back up and reverse. So inhale, exhale, right arm through our legs and curl down, and exhale, left arm, and lower, 
Try not to crunch it on your shoulders. This is um, a light oblique crunch. <sighs> Try not to let your carriage slam the bumper just like I just did. Here's four. And now we're going to do the last four as a challenge, staying curled the whole time. So right arm and lift and left arm and right arm and left arm. Halfway there. Try not to lose your curl up. And now, turn your knees in, rest them on the foot bar, peg your straps, go ahead and give your knees a nice head. Take a couple nice deep breaths. That was a lot of work. I'm going to come off to the side. We are going to do some scooter and then some plank work through the center. So, for the scooter, I am going to have uh, one red and one blue spring on. We're going to do scooter on one side. Go ahead and go to scooter on the other side. Change our springs. Do some forearm plank work. When we were talking earlier about doing the same exercise uh, on our on the front on our forearms, maintaining the neutral body position the whole time. That was the neutral body position for the plank work, guys. So. Let's go ahead and start with scooter though before I get too far ahead of myself. I'm going to place one hand on the far side of the bar, one hand a little bit closer to the center. My leg that's closest to the hair is going to come up. I'm going to tuck my toes, press my heels into the shoulder block. I'm going to bend my knees. I want, when I bend my knees, I want them to be lined up. I don't want one knee to be forward, one knee to be backward. I want them to be the same distance. I want to have weight in my heel and I want to be bent down. Now I want to be in a neutral spine here. So I'm wrapping my ribs, drawing my abdominals up and in. Think of this as a baby workout for the exercise that we're about to do in the middle with both legs. I'm going to press out and resist it back in. And press squeezing my glutes and resist. Three, four. Now, for my leg that's standing on the floor, I have it pressed into the carriage so that I can create stability for myself. Dropping my shoulders up, back and down, think of spreading your shoulder blades wide. Good. Come back in. Without moving your heel, rotate the femur and the hip socket. Come to a turned out position with your foot. And now press and release. Draw your abdominals up and in. Good. If you're feeling this in your low back, think of tucking your pelvis towards your nose ever so gently to release out of the low back. If you don't have any pain in your low back, please disregard that cue. I'm looking over my foot bar towards the ground. Again, this is as if I have the rod coming straight out of my head through my tailbone at an angle. That's what's right. I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to set myself up the same way again. So, hand the edge, hang in the middle, bring my leg closest to the former up, tuck my toes, press my heel into the, the shoulder block, bend my knees down, make sure that my knees are equal, they're lined up together, and I'm going to press back, and resist it back in. This is my weaker glute, I'm not ashamed to say, widen your shoulder blades, abdominals up and in. Drawing my ribs together as if I'm wearing a corset. Press your leg into the carriage. It's on the floor. Here's eight. I have a slight bend in my elbows so that I'm able to create space in the front of my collarbones as well. Good. Now, leaving your heel where it is, rotate your femur in the hip socket so your leg is turned out. Bend into that leg seeing the floor still and bend and resist. Abs up and in. Again, if you're feeling this in your lower back, you're swaying up, think of tucking your tail slightly to come out of that position to get more in your glutes. Good. This is one of my favorite exercises. Here's eight. And 10. Good. Now 
release your foot. Come up to standing. We're going to release the leg spring. So we're just on one medium spring now. One red spring on my machine. I'm going to drop my foot bar. I'm going to take my box, place it on as a short box. We are only do, using the box from plank today. I take one of my sticky nuts, put it right in the middle of my box, take my other sticky nut, put it on my standing platform. If you need to add a standing platform, please do so. We are going to be doing three of each of the exercises in the center pike, three to the right, and three to the left. So, I'm going to come down onto my knees. I'm going to tuck my toes. Stand on the standing platform. Try not to wrap your toes around the standing platform and grip in so that you're working the front of your leg. We want, we're not working the same parts of our body when we're doing that. I'm going to place my hands down in the sphinx position. I'm going to locate a quadruped position. For myself personally, that involves me pulling the carriage away from the bumper slightly. That's where you have to go to, that's great. But we're going to find the neutral quadruped position first. Again, as if it, it's as if I have a rod going straight up from the tip top of my head up through my tailbone. I'm wrapping my ribs, drawing them up and in, as if I'm wearing a corset, drawing my abdominals to my spine. Think of where we just were for scooter. And I'm going to hover my knees. I'm going to press out to a plank and pull back in with bent knees and press out. Squeezing my glutes to press up and back in. My heels are separated just like in footwork when I was on my back. And I'm going to saw my arms away and bring my elbows back under my shoulders. And two. And three. Now staying here as if I was doing round back elephant, I'm going to start to lift, tucking my tail, trying to bring my ears by my biceps. I'm going to snake my body back up, articulating back out to a forearm plank with my elbows underneath my shoulders. Tuck my tail. Snake my spine back up to pike. And back out. And one more. Feel a nice articulation as you do this. And now, coming back out. Now bend your knees to come in. Rest your knees on the carriage for a moment. We're going to hover them back up to do the oblique exercises to the right. I will be rotating my hips to the right. I'm going to try to keep my shoulders and upper body as parallel with the box as I can. So I'm going to hover my knees. I'm going to rotate my toes to the right. I'm going to rotate my heels to the left. I'm going to press out and bend my knees back in and press. I'm squeezing my inner thighs the whole time and press and stay out. Now saw my arms and pull back. Try not to sink into your left side. And three. Now tuck your tail and lift into the bent elephant side pike and come back down. Elbows underneath my shoulders. Try my abdominals up and in. Squeeze my inner thighs to lift and extend. Now lower and one more. Extend and lower. Bend my knees to come in, come back to parallel or center, rest my knees for a moment. We have one more side, guys, and then we're going to be going ahead, we're going to go ahead and just do some leg work and then mermaid, and we'll be done. Now, I'm going to come back into the quadruped position. Wrap my ribs as if I'm wearing a corset so they're not flaring. Draw my abdominals up and in, locate my neutral spine. Cover my knees, bring my toes to the left, my heels to the right, and press out, leaving my elbows and my shoulders the whole time, squeezing my heels, and pull back. Now squeeze my glutes, squeeze my inner thighs, and pull back. Now stay out, and saw my arms away, and back under. Two, abdominals up in it, and three. Now tuck my tail, come up in a side round back elephant, press back out to the side plank, Again, my shoulders are as square with the box as they can be, even though my hips are slayed to the left side. One more. Squeeze my inner thighs, squeeze my glutes. Now, bend my knees. Bring my body back to a squared up position. Rest my knees. 
come down, bring the carriage into the bottom of his press ladle. In a modified child's pose, round over your box, reaching your arms long. It feels nice to me if I press my thighs all the way up against the box. If it does not feel good to you, please locate the child's pose that feels best to you. Take a couple nice deep breaths. Do one more. Now we get to slowly press yourself back. Touching, feeling up, 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 all the way through the spine. Come off to the side carefully. Remove your sticky mats. Remove your box. From there, we're going to make sure that we have our foot straps on. I was practicing yesterday and I didn't change my straps back, so that's why they were where they were. Sorry about that. If you have a double loop on, to make, you can use either double loop. If you want to make the weights heavier, you would use a shorter loop. To make the weights a little bit lighter, you would use the longer loops. So, from there, we are going to have one red spring on, which is what we currently have on. So, leaving it there, we're going to locate our ball, come down onto our side. I'm going to tuck my foot under again in that same position that we were in for the arm work. So, where my body and my, my thigh are at a 90 degree angle, but my heels tuck back slightly so that I don't kick the foot bar. Using my arm, I'm going to pull the strap down to my foot. I'm going to keep my leg in a 90 degree position for my body just like we were talking about doing for our arm work, for short lever. So, same idea, we're gonna short lever donkey kick, bring our leg out to standing, and come back in. I'm still lifting up slightly from my body, so I still have that lift in my obliques. You are in charge of the carriage. If it starts to bounce, it's because you're not controlling the springs. You're just popping into your um, major muscle groups a little bit more instead of using the smaller muscle groups to really control it. We're gonna, the magic number here is gonna be eight. Try to only bring your leg back into that 90 degree position. Now extend it. Again, we're in a 90 degree position using our glutes. We're gonna pull it back and float it forward. If the medium spring is too heavy for you, please feel free to drop it to one light which on my machine is one blue. Try to keep it coming straight out of your, right out of your sits bones. Good. Pressing into the shoulder block, holding on to the peg. Here's one more. Try not to tuck, we're only hinging at our hips when we do this, right? Bring your foot back in to the donkey kick position and turn it up by rotating your femur in the hip socket. Now straighten your leg down and bring it back to the 90. Now squeeze. We're rotating our femur in the hip socket the whole time but leaving our sacrum nice and perpendicular to the carriage. So we're not rocking back to accommodate. This is just like the arm work where, you know, some people can get their knee directly up to the ceiling. I'm not one of those people. If you can't, just rotate where you can. Good. Let's do one more. I lost count, of course. <laughs> and come back up. Now, straighten your foot up. Don't sink to get there. Go ahead and can keep that lift in your, in your um, side closest to the mat. Now, rotate your femur in the hips. I can pull it down and float it up and rotate, leading with your heel the whole time. Good. Whew, glasses. Good. Whoa, I'm really feeling it now. Six. And seven. And eight, keep it down there. And we're gonna do circles the size of the bender ball, four, uh, five in each direction. One, two, three, four, and five, and reverse. And two, and three, and four, and five, and float it back up. Bend your knee in carefully. 
way to protect your knee and release the carriage to the bumper by releasing the strap with your hand and arm. Now we're going to come to the other side, do the same series. We're going to come through the center and do some leg work. We're going to do short spine. We're going to do mermaid and then we're going to be done with our class, guys. So coming to the other side carefully and with control because we have very light springs right now, right? Just one medium spring. I'm going to come on to my side, place the ball under my head. I'm going to locate my neutral spine, sideline, getting a nice space between my ribs and my hip. Upward, I'm lifting up as if a trail of ants is going to come underneath my side. My thigh is 90 degrees from my body. I have pulled my heel back to my glutes so that I don't catch my toe on the foot bar. I'm going to bring my foot up in the strap. I'm going to come into a donkey kick position with 90 degree body position. I'm going to press it out with my heel to a standing position and release. I'm just unhinging from the hip and hinging from the hip. So straighten and bend. I'm not tucking or tilting my pelvis. Good. And straighten, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then lift up out of your side, stack your shoulders and your hips. I don't think I'm stacked very well. There we go. And eight. Come back in. Extend your leg to the front. Oh, my catalog's going. I'm going to lift my leg slightly and I'm going to pull it back. Try to get it coming straight out of your hip. The catalog's in the way of me doing that right now. So I'm going to have to raise my leg slightly to get here. Unless I wanted to bend it like this, which I don't want to do. I want a full, long lever. We have two more. Again, you want your leg to come up to 90. Don't bring it up above that because you're going to start to tug a little bit most likely. Good. One more. Squeeze from where the glutes and the thigh meet. Now, draw your leg in to the donkey kick position. Rotate your femur in the hip socket so that your knee is tracking over your big toe. Don't rock back into your low back and press it out by squeezing your glutes and pull it back, rotating. Then press and pull. And three. Here's four. Five. Guys, we're almost done with the sideline legs. Try not to draw your elbow up like I just did. Gets in your shoulder a little bit. Drop your elbow down. One more. Now extend your leg up. Again, I'm rocking forward, so I bring my leg straight to the ceiling. I rock back into my low back. So I want to make sure I'm not doing that. But I want to make sure I'm rotating my femur the whole time. Squeeze my glutes. Now, when you come up, don't sink. Leave that space next to your side. And squeeze it down. And lift and squeeze down with your inner thighs and float your leg back up. Good. Keep breathing. Oh, I keep trying to want you to drive my elbow up because I'm starting to get uncomfortable. Stay out of your neck, okay? Now, staying down, we're going to do uh, five circles in each direction, sides of the bender ball. Don't sink into your side. And now we're going to reverse for five, four, three, two, one, and float your leg up, bend it in, release your foot, carefully release the carriage to the bumper with your arm. Now, get rid of your pillow. We can go ahead and bring our foot bar back up. So you're going to place one red spring and one blue spring on the machine. We're going to have our head rest down because we are going to go in to short spine. If you have osteoporosis, osteopenia, uh, neck problems, please do not do short spine. Please choose the stretch or double leg uh, or foot start exercise of your choice to do while we do short spine. So coming down onto my back, I'm going to press the carriage out with one foot. Locate the strap, place it around my arch, press into the strap, 
Take a strap, place it on my other foot. Extend both legs long. Scooch away from the shoulder block slightly. Bring my legs into a nice frog. Nice tight frog. Really releasing the hip flexors. Keeping a nice flat sacrum. Because if you're rocking up, you're not getting the same hip stretch that you are with a heavy sacrum. I'm going to press out. Squeeze my inner thighs and plane back in. Pardon me, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, I guess not. Again, here, our magic number is eight. Squeeze your inner thigh. Rotate the femurs and the hip sockets. Knees track over your big toe. One more. Pull it all the way back in. Extend your feet up to the ceiling. Turn it out into a Pilates seat. Bring it out to the side. Nice stretch. Flex and squeeze your legs together. We're really stretching our inner thighs here. But while we're doing it, we want to make sure that we're squeezing our legs equally, keeping a nice heavy sacrum to bring the back to the center. While we're keeping a nice heavy sacrum, don't flare your ribs. So if you need to press down slightly to weight your sacrum more, please do so. And you'll feel it strongly in your glutes there too. Good. Now bring your feet to parallel. Flex to lower to working level and point to lift. And flex to lower and point to lift. Again, we're keeping our neutral spine the whole time. Not popping into anything, rocking into our tailbone, lifting our back ribs. Here's six and seven. And here's eight. Now, turn your feet out to Pilates feet. Open them the width of the reformer. Pull them down the side of the reformer. Squeeze them together in the center. Bring them parallel. Float them back up. If you felt the backs of your hips ground more strongly as you floated your feet up, do not bring your feet as low. So turn them out, separate, and bring down half as far. Squeeze together, parallel, and up. What we're doing is we're trying to keep the contraction in our lower abdominals right now. One more. These are more of leg triangles as opposed to leg circles. And now, keeping our feet parallel, we're going to bring them down to the center. Keep a heavy, heavy sacrum. Turn it out to Pilates feet. Separate them the width of our floor. Float them up. Don't tuck your tail. Squeeze your legs together. Parallel and down. Turn out. Separate. Rise them up and squeeze. Parallel. Squeeze down with your inner thighs, or your uh, hamstrings, your inner thighs and glutes. Good. I lost counts, so we'll do one more. No surprise. Now, you can keep doing leg circles here if you would like. Otherwise, we're going to be moving into short spine. Again, osteoporosis, osteopenia, neck problems, back problems. Please do not do short spine. I've come down into a tight frog. I platform my arms by my side. We're going to do three. I'm going to press out to my working level. I'm going to pike up my hips, raising my feet up to the ceiling. Then I'm going to tuck my tail and articulate my spine off, standing into my straps, really pressing up. I'm not in my neck. I'm going to bend my feet, or bend my knees, bringing my knees over my shoulder, but flexing my feet. Leaving my feet where they are in space and not moving them. I'm going to articulate my body away from my feet, rolling down my spine, vertebra by vertebra. I'm going to straighten my legs as much as I can, leaving my feet where they are, feeling a nice hamstring stretch. Then I can straighten my legs if I'd like and draw them down to my hip, uh, my glutes. The straightening of the legs is not actually part of the short spine. It just feels nice for the first one. So we're not going to do that on any more, right? I'm going to straighten my legs, pike at the hips, tuck my tail, articulate my feet up, to a shoulder bridge. I'm going to be able to lift my neck up so I'm not in my cervical spine. Bend my knees in. Articulate my body away from my feet and pull my feet down and press out and pike and articulate and bend my knees. And I'm going to, tuck, I'm going to begin to roll down, 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 down and pull my feet down. From there, I'm going to take one foot, take it out of the the foot strap, cross out to a straight leg, take my foot on the other strap, locate the foot bar, and bend my knees to come back in. So you know, 
in one red and one blue, I'm going to be going into mermaid. If you have knee problems or hip problems and cannot sit in this Z sit position, you can do mermaid sitting to the side with your feet dangling off or crisscross applesauce. You will not be able to add on the chest lift at the end though. So just continue to do mermaid as you classically would, like we will for the first two, instead of adding on for the third. I'm going to press my left shin up against the shoulder block. I'm going to bring my right shin to face the side of the reformer. My right hand is slightly forward in the middle, pressing in, drawing my shoulder down. I'm spiraling up slightly to my pinky blade edge, as we talked about earlier, really squeeze under our arms. I flip my left hand up towards the ceiling. I'm going to straighten up and over. I'm going to reach up and over as if I'm reaching over a ball. Now I'm going to bend my elbow down, drive my shoulder away from my ear to come up to sitting. Hold on to my peg or my shoulder block and pull over into the one. Come back up to sitting, locate the foot bar, and press away, draw my shoulder blade down. It's as if I have a pane of, pane of glass in front of me and a pane of glass behind me, and I'm bending between the two. I'm not rotating forward or backward. Now, adding on, if we're able to, if we're in C-sit. I'm going to reach over, and I'm going to rotate my body to face the springs. No longer finish your page of glass. Place my left hand on the foot bar, bring my right hand to the further, to uh, the other side. I'm in a neutral spine right now. I'm going to press up, and I'm going to come up into a nice chest lift. I'm not flaring my ribs, so my ribs are very contained, still wearing the core, so when I press out, I'm going to press out into a neutral spine, bringing my biceps by my ears. I'm going to bicep up, press down, do a nice chest lift, and press back, back, back to neutral spine. One more. I don't want my shoulders by my ears. Press back. Now I'm going to bring my right hand back up towards the front of the center, flip my left hand off, rotate to the side, bend my elbow down, flip it back up, and take one more reach into the well. Good. From there, I'm just going to rotate sides. Again, if you cannot sit with the Z sit, my right shin is pressed up against the shoulder blocks, my left shin is parallel with the side of the reformer. Please hang your legs off to the side or sit crisscross applesauce. If you are doing this, you will not be able to add the um, rotation and chest lift at the end. From here, I'm going to press my left pinky blade edge a little bit more into the foot bar, right from the center, more towards the front, and press out and bend over as if I'm bending over a barrel or a ball. I come up, and I'm going to reach over into the well. Again, for these first two, it's as if I'm between two panes of glass. Enjoy the nice side bend. For those of you who are sitting crisscross applesauce or their legs to the side, please do not do this chest expansion or this chest lift. Now reach over to the side, rotate your chest so that you're facing the spring. Place your right hand on the foot bar and bring your left hand wide. If you're in a neutral spine right now, you're going to press up and come up into a nice chest lift, pressing down on the foot bar. Press back into a neutral spine, biceps by ears, come up. Press down, drawing your abdominals up and in, drawing your ribs together as if you're wearing a corset. This is our final one. Nice long neck. Bring your left hand back to the forward of the center, basically. <laughs> Bring your right hand up, rotate to the side, bend your elbow down, drawing your shoulder blade down your back, and reach over into the well. We're going to come to the side, place our feet on the floor. Our heels are going to be under our sits bones. We're going to take a nice deep inhale. And exhale. I'm so honored that you joined me for class today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, I hope that everyone has a great day. Thank you.